Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna to install all the plugins we need for this series. And so those are the plugins that we said that we're gonna install. So we're gonna see how to install them. And again, remember that installing these plugins once you are using Visual Studio Code and you have that install already, which we went through in the previous videos, how to install it for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Now you have Visual Studio installed with all the tools we're gonna install the plugins and then test the plugins. Okay, so this is how we're gonna verify that our tools were installed correctly. And so let's just jump right in and start installing these plugins because it doesn't matter which platform you are on, the installation is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna start off from this directory here that I have for the series. And it's Learn Computer Programming in my home directory and I've cloned the repo for the project, Programming Languages Compared. Now installing a plugin is simply a matter of clicking on the icon in the lower um, left there and then we're going to start searching for the plugins that we want to install and these are the list of plugins. Uh, remember, you can install any plugin you like or if you don't want to install any, don't install any. I'm just giving you some recommended plugin that I've used, I, you'll see me using and that should help you follow the series in a manner that you know mirrors what I am doing. If you type a plugin name and you don't see that green button next to it, it means that you already have it installed. If you see the green button next to the plugin, just hit it and it's going to install the plugin. Now, since I said it, so I'm going to show you how to install a plugin. I'm going to install Rust because I have all the other plugins already installed. Not because we are using Rust, but because I want to show you how it is like to install a plugin. So I'm not going to uninstall the ones I've installed just to show you. So I'll install the Rust plugin and I'm going to just click on the green button there and it's going to tell me to reload. So I'll click reload and reload window and the editor is going to restart and the plugin is installed and that's all there is to it. Now, one of the things we want to do now, like I said, is in addition to installing the plugin is we want to be able to test it. So I'm going to create a directory here for Go application and we're going to do a hello world for each one of the languages that we're going to be playing with and so I'm going to start off with Go. And so right now Go application is pretty straightforward. We've, we've written Go application many times. So I'm going to speed this part up, right? This is just a simple hello world application in Go. The one thing you might um, want to see is the preferences. So this is my preference that I have set. Um, you can go to your um, editor preferences and on the Mac, it's going to be the preference menu under the application name, Visual Studio code application menu in Windows and Linux, it's going to be on the file menu. And so this is what I have said. Feel free to use this as a starting point. This is the rest of it. Um, add or remove as you see fit. But I'm not going to spend much time in here. It's categorized. They group it. You want something, just double click on it and add it to the right hand side where you can change it. I'm not going to make any changes now. I'm just going to close this off because um, there's nothing that I really need to make here, I just wanted to show you. All right, so let's continue with our simple LO world examples for each of the languages that, um, and the tools that we have installed. So I'm gonna continue by writing a C program, create a C directory. I'm gonna write a simple C hello world program. Um, I don't know why I'm getting that um, red line there that says, um, you know, it can't find the path and I read the green line. But anyway, it still works anyway. If I right click on it, it works. Now I'm going to do a C++ application. And there are many ways to write C++ Hello World application. C++ is what you call a multi paradigm language. But I'm going to write the Hello World here for now. When we actually start looking at language, we look at some other ways to write Hello World. Next one is going to be Python. And I'm going to write a simple Python one-liner again. I'm going to write the minimum you need in each language to get hello world. Um, and right click and it runs fine. Um, then Groovy. Um, Groovy is a language that's built on top of the JVM, which is Java Virtual Machine. And so you can write a one line hello world in Groovy also. And behind the scenes, it's going to create a little bit more Java. Same thing with Scala, one line in Scala. Um, word of uh, um, up, heads up here is that sometimes I'm going to write code for one language in another. I heard someone call this language dyslexia. So I think that's like the right way to look at it. Um, the other thing I want to do now is jump in and start working on Java. And so if we create a Java cla um, class, and that's what you call when you write um, 
the source file for Java is all broken down into class. Everything in Java is a class. And so um, I'm seeing this message here about a class path. So I suspect that though my um, Java home is not set properly, um, this would have been set for when we install the Windows. In Java and Windows, we had to set the class path. So I have the option of setting my environmental variable in the editor. And so like to do that, I just go back to preference settings. Um, I'll look for the section on the Java configuration. There is Java home, but I don't want to set it in my editor. That's going to make it work for the editor, but I want to set it in my um, environment, my home environment. So any on my command line, I can see here that I don't have it set. So to do that, I'm going to go back and edit my shell configuration. So I'm using ZSH. So I'm going to edit my ZSH that after that exports that SH file. And I'm going to add the export um, Java home environmental variable here. And the way the value I'm going to set it to, I'm going to get it from this slash user lib exe slash Java underscore home utility. And it's going to return for me the string that represent my Java home. The reason I want to use this is that if I ever upgrade or update my Java, whatever the new version is, is going to always return me the correct version once I log in. Okay. Um, for Windows and Linux, you don't have this option. So it means that if you do update your Java, you need to update that from time to time. But Linux people, I'm not going to tell you how to set your Java home. You're going to notice it's pretty much along the same line. Windows people, we did it already when we did the, in the tools installation. Now I have to exit my shell and restart my terminal and um, open a new one for it to pick up those changes and see I, could, I made a mistake. So I have to go modify my um, ZSH exports again, um, correct that error. Um, it's supposed to be slash USR and not slash U USER, um, create a new shell. And if I type echo dollar sign Java home, which you should do after you make any changes to just make sure that it's set correctly. I said so this is set correctly. So now I'm going to start the Visual Studio Code from this environment where Java Home is set properly. All right. So now we have to change this and fix up our Java code. And so, uh, like I said, pretty much everything in Java when you write files is you sort of write a class file. That's all things are broken down in Java. And so, and files are in packages, but they don't have to be. Like I said, I'm writing a minimum amount of code necessary to have a running Java Hello World application. So our main here needs to return a type, and I'm going to say it returns void, which means it doesn't return anything. Um, but it needs to also accept some param a parameter here at least. So I'm going to say an argument of string. The string type in Java is capital S for string, and that's why I say string array or array of strings. And again, I'm going to remove this package because I don't actually need it. And now I'm going to right click and see if we can run this code. And if it works, that means everything for Java is set up well, and it does work. I can confirm this by changing the string and then run it again. And there it works fine. I see the new string. So let's reset it. So it looks like all the other um, examples that we have. And so this tells us that all our tools so far that we've installed and tested, they're working fine. All right. So this is it. We have installed our tools, set up our plugins, tested our, our plugins. We haven't talked about the differences between the languages. And remember, this is not about what's better or worse. It's just a nice, fun way. We're going to have some fun by comparing languages and say, what is similar? What is the same? Um, what's different? Uh, who might have inspired who, who came after, or blah, 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 those sort of thing. Um, uh, we're not all going to talk about all the same thing every single time, but along that line. All right. Subscribe. See you on Twitter. So do follow me on Twitter. It's Straversity1. On Instagram, it's just Traversity. Um, of course, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe. Uh, if you're subscribed already, please thumbs up the video and help me spread the word. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.